Hey, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, wherever you're at in the world, or good evening to some people in some parts of the world. Is it not a good day to be alive today? It's great to have you here. I'm glad you're all here. Hey, can you all hear me pretty good out there? Uh, give me a holler back. Can you guys hear me pretty good? Not sure if you can hear me or not. All right, let's see if I can turn that up. Well, I'm so excited to be here, and I'm so happy uh, just to, you know, be, just to come on and share this word. I, I clicked on a little bit early for the live, so for those of you who are, uh, happen to be here uh, or who've been following consistently, you know that I come on live a little later on, but today I was so <laughs> excited. I wanted to get this out, and so if you happen to miss the live, uh, don't worry. Just watch the whole thing on a replay, and uh, uh, I'm just, I, I, this is a word today that I believe everybody needs to hear. So listen, let's let's wow. get right into it. Hey, Taffy, uh, how are you? JC2020, good to see you again today. Um, Apostle Nathaniel Hills, thank you for being here today. Uh, Troy, good. Hey, we ready. Yes, let's go. Hey, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you today. Thank you for a marvelous opportunity here to, to study your word, to, to hear it, Lord. And thank you just for giving us a chance to be here, Lord, giving us our life, our help, and our strength. Now, as we look at your word today, lead us, guide us, open up our understanding so that we can do what you desire for us to do. We love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. You know, um, one of the hardest things in life to do is to manage your stuff. You got that? Manage your stuff. The stuff meaning uh, your money, your car, your finances, your things that you have in life. That's one of the hardest things. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's getting kind of windy out here. Okay. Uh, so you guys let me know if, it's, uh, if you hear too much wind background. But anyway, uh, when you have stuff in your life, which is there's nothing wrong with having stuff in your life. But when you have it, you want to make sure that you manage it and it doesn't manage you. Um, Dr. Dre, uh, you guys know who Dr. Dre is, famous uh, uh, rap artist, uh, recently had a brain aneurysm. Uh, and I, I don't know his condition as of now, but I, I hear he's making a, uh, a speedy recovery. And, I, you know, that's really a difficult thing to go through. But he had this brain aneurysm. And Dr. Dre, who's a very wealthy man, uh, was away at the hospital. And while he was away at the hospital, there were people who tried to break into his home to take his stuff. Isn't that awful? Yeah, it's awful. I mean, people tried to break into his home to take his stuff. Why would somebody try to do that? Because people prioritize stuff sometimes over what really matters. When we look at this passage today, we're going to see that. Listen to this. Mark chapter number 8, verse 34 through 38. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 through 38. Here's what it says. And when he called the people unto him with his disciples... Also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his own life shall lose it. But whosoever shall say, uh, lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same will save it. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever, therefore, shall not shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him shall the son of man be ashamed when it comes to the glory of his father with his holy angels. Mm, they got the blessing to the reading of his word. I'm going to move quickly. So make sure that you utilize the replay button. But listen, I think that this is just going to be exciting. Uh, this is going to be something just just for you. So listen, let's walk right through it. And our highlight, our focus is going to be on verse 36. So wherever you're at, just type verse 30, 36. But we're going to walk through verse 34 all the way to verse 38 so we get the context. Listen to what he says first. This is Jesus talking. Jesus first, in verse 34, is addressing two groups of people. Two groups. And he called the people. 
and his disciples. It says he called people unto him with his disciples is what it says. So he's not just talking to believers. He's talking to everybody. You see, the first thing that we should understand is that Jesus is giving us lifelong information for us to have a better life here while we're on earth. But moreover, he's letting us know, listen, if you follow this, you're going to have a better life in the afterlife when this time on earth is done. So the first thing I want you to do is type this in the comment section. Type this. He's talking to two groups of people. Just put two groups of people. Two groups of people. That's the first thing we're learning. He's talking to two groups of people. Just type two groups of people. And what is he saying to these two groups of people? Well, what he's saying is this. The first statement he makes is, whoever shall come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever will come after me. What does that mean? Whoever is a follower of Jesus has to do something. They have to do something, which is take up their cross and follow me. Hmm. Let's deal with the first part of that. What does it mean to take up your cross? Well, the first thing that's really amazing about this is that Jesus, it appears, is almost foreshadowing how he's going to die. He's saying, listen, you got to take up your cross. Well, if you know anything about Jesus, Jesus died on a cross, which is a Roman crucifix. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. But he also said while he was on his cross, if I be lifted up, I'll draw who? All men unto me. That's Jesus. But listen, he's making a statement. He says, listen, if you want to follow me, you got to take up your cross. What, what is your cross? The cross was heavy. The cross was the thing that was on Jesus's back. The cross was the thing that he was hung up on. What's the takeaway? What is this preacher trying to get across you regarding your cross? You see, listen to this. Your cross could be your stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I don't understand. Let's break it down. You see, your cross could be your new car. Your cross could be your job. Your cross could be your bank account. Your cross could be that good looking man or woman. Your cross could be the stuff that you have prided yourself on. And listen, like Jesus, when he had the cross on his back, walking to the end of his life, just like we are, whether we know it or not, walking to the end of this life, because everybody who was born is born into this world dying. So that means every single day you're closer to the end of your life. So when you get things, if if they are put on your back or you're carrying them through life, they can become your cross. You see, if you ask any, uh, if you ask any wealthy person and if they're really honest with you, they'll tell you this. They'll tell you that wealth and fame has caused them to change their life. It has become their cross. They can't do normal things anymore. You can't see people like Steph Curry going through the drive through anymore because people will see the nice car that he has. They'll see what he and they'll do strange things. You can't see like famous politicians or presidents going through walking through normal places anymore uh, without Secret Service because the wealth and fame make people do strange things. So in other words, their wealth and their fame has become their cross. It's something that they carry through life and it's causing them to change. You see, when Jesus was carrying this cross up to Calvary, it caused him to change his position. It caused him to, in the physical. It caused him to change how he, he drugged this cross because it was so heavy. It was a burden to him. Sometimes wealth and fame positions can be burdensome to you because you can't say certain things without a backlash happening. You can't do certain things without a backlash happening. You can't live a normal lifestyle anymore because your position has become your cross. But watch this. What does Jesus say? Whoever wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Jesus tells us that if you want to be his follower, you have to take up your cross and follow him. 
translation for us, my takeaway, your cross or your stuff should always follow Jesus. Type that in the comment section right there. That's good. Say, I will follow Jesus. Type it now. I will follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. You see, no matter if I have a little bit of money, I will follow Jesus. No matter if I have a great big Rolls Royce, a Bentley, uh, whatever, whatever fancy car it is at this day at the time, I will follow Jesus. No matter if I am the president of a corporation, I will follow Jesus. No matter if I am working in the mailroom, I will follow Jesus. And it seems like an easy enough thing to do. But it's not. Some people can't do it anymore. You see, wealth and fame for some people cause them to have to change their life. And it causes them to have to do things that they never thought they would have to do. Like deny Jesus. So when we're over here in Mark chapter eight, verse thirty four through thirty eight, we're finding out that Jesus is unfolding this process. Now, be clear. I want to be crystal clear. Get good things while you're here in this life. That's nice. But don't let those good things get you. Let's say it again. I'm going to get good things when I'm here in life. You should, too. But don't let those good things get you. Don't make that car your priority. Don't make your bank account your priority. Don't make the clothes you wear your priority. You can have nice things. It's OK. But the moment those nice things begin to shape your life and move you away from Jesus, then you need to get rid of those nice things and follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. But watch this. Watch what he says. He's clear. He makes it clear. Jesus says and I'm in verse 34 still. Jesus says or excuse me, verse 35. 34 and 35. You have to deny yourself, take up your cross, take up your things and follow me. And whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake shall save it. So what does verse 35 mean? It's furthering verse 34. He says, whoever tries to use their thing, this is my takeaway, this is my commentary, this is my sermon. Whoever is trying to take their things to save their life is going to lose their life. But whoever will lose their life, lose their things, keep their things in the right priority and follow Jesus Christ will save their life. Friends, sadly, there are some people in this world who place more priorities in their things than they do in God. Somebody just type yes, 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 yes. If you have seen somebody who places more priority in their stuff than they do God. Mm -hmm. And what they think is this stuff is going to bring them to a to a place of safety and security. Now, as a pastor, I have been at the deathbed of people. And let me be very clear. Listen to me closely. When people are dying, some things just don't matter. Some things don't matter. When a person's dying, it just don't matter. When they're trying to get those last few breaths, it doesn't matter that I had a grudge against my, my ex-husband or wife. It don't matter that me and my daughter didn't see eye to eye all the time. It don't matter that my car in the driveway has, you know, 15, 16, 17 inch rims. It doesn't matter that my shoes look the way that I want them. It don't matter that dress. It don't matter that suit. Or it doesn't matter how big my house is. I am dying. And you know what? When a person is dying, from my observation, one of the only things that really matter to that person is if the people who they love are going to be okay. You see, they begin to put away all the, the silliness. And for that moment of time, they realize that death 
is down the street. They realize that death's door has opened up and they're getting ready to walk through it. And for that moment of time, when they're taking those final few steps, they realize nothing else matters. You see, <clears throat> in the word here, Jesus lets us know in verse 35, Mark chapter 8, verse 35, whoever shall save his life shall lose it. Whoever shall try to use their stuff to save their life, to preserve their life, is going to lose it. It's never going to happen. At best, you can preserve your life. All your billions of dollars at best can get you the best that's here now. But that's it. It's not going to save your life. And moreover, Jesus is not just talking about this present day life, but he's talking about the afterlife. The Bible says it's once appointed unto a man to die. Then afterwards is what? The judgment. So everybody is going to die. Listen to me very closely. Here's the next thing I want you to type in the comment section, wherever you're at in the world. Type this. You don't go to the grave with your stuff. You don't go to the grave with your stuff. You don't take a U-Haul to heaven with you. That's an even better statement. You don't take a U-Haul to heaven with you. You don't go to the grave with your stuff. Why? Just like I told you to share with you about Dr. Dre, the moment people think you're leaving, they're going to try and get your stuff. That's how nasty and how foul some people are. The moment you think they think you're getting ready to check out, that's how nasty and foul that you are. You see, also as a pastor, I do funerals. And one of the nastiest times behind those closed doors is the division of property be, uh, among the deceased. I mean, it's one of the nastiest times. You have ex-wives, ex-husbands, you have kids that were estranged that come in and they're all looking to get their piece of what that person had. And if that person didn't make it very clear what they want to happen, that becomes a very nasty thing to sort through. Because some people only care about stuff. But Jesus makes it clear. Look at this. Verse number 35. He says, listen, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. If you're trying to save this life or preserve it, you're going to lose the afterlife because your focus is here on this life. But watch this. Whoever shall save, lose his life for my shit, uh, whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. What does that mean? In other words, if I'm following Christ, I'm denying myself, I'm taking my stuff and following Christ, I am losing the fact that I've lost the fact that my stuff controls me, but I've resolved to the fact that God controls me. God leads me. So what's going to happen is I don't care about my stuff. I got it. It's nice. It's great. But that stuff is going to follow God. No matter how little or how big of stuff I got. Are you following what I'm saying? So he says, listen, if you lose your life for my sake, you're going to save it. Because you're going in the right direction. Here it is, friends. Here is the crux as we move to the centerpiece of this sermon today. Here is the crux. I will put God first. I know I got a little bit of wind out here. I hope you can hear me. Uh, just type if it's too windy for you. I'm going to say it again. Put God first. Type that in the comment section. Put God first. Put God first. First, in everything you do, put God first in everything you do, put God first and he will lead you to places in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Sometimes he will direct your path to riches and fame. That's great. I'm still going to put God first. Sometimes he would direct your path to a lowly state where you don't have a little bit or, or, or nothing like the woman with, with two mites. But still, I'm going to put God first. Sometimes he's going to lead you to a place where you are powerful. Still put God first. Is there anybody out there that will put God first? Just type I will. So now here's the crux of this statement. Verse 36. Jesus says, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? 
What does it do you any good to get everything this world has to offer and lose your soul? What is he saying? Well, if you live or you know anybody that's long enough or know anybody long enough, you'll know that this world is fleeting, it's passing, and it's gone like that. What do you live? How many years do you think the average person lives? Type it in the comment section. 70 years if you're, if you're good, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years. And that may seem a long span of time to some people, but in the grand scheme of things, considering how long this earth has been here, if you live 100 years old, that's no time. Yeah. Yeah, Nathan's like 70. Zoe's like 70. Dominic's like 80 years. You know, bro, that's not a lot of time. So see, if I spent 100 years, well, let's just give you the maximum. 120 years you've been here. And let's say you acquired all the power you can get. You got all the money. You got all the fame. And then you die. You cannot take your wealth and fame and exchange it for something to get into heaven. You know, uh, I was sharing this yesterday with my son. You know, my son, who was still in ele uh, elementary school, uh, they get color cards for their behavior. And depending on how they good they get, their color card changes. So, for example, if they had a good day, you get a blue color card. That means they did good. And at the end of the week, they exchange that color card for a prize. They love that. If they had a really good day, they get a purple color card. And at the end of the week, you could take that color card and exchange it for a big prize. But if you didn't have a good day, you got a red color card. You didn't get a prize, but you got a talk or a lesson. Well, I told him, I said, well, you know, son, if you got yourself the best you can get, which is a purple color card. Son, could you take that purple color card, take it to the grocery store, buy a buy two hundred dollars worth of groceries and say, here, bang, take my purple color card because uh, I'm paying for these groceries with my purple color card. He's like. No, I can't do that. It's not it's not the same exchange in currency. <laughs> OK, so we got that then. Right, son. So you can't take a purple color card and pay for your groceries at the store. He understood that at his elementary age. So my question to you is, do you understand this at your grown age? You can't take your purple color card and exchange it to get into heaven. Well, what am I saying? You see, you can't go to heaven and tell God, hey, God, I got 100,000 followers on YouTube. Bang, let me into heaven. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't tell God, God, I got 3 million followers on TikTok. Bang, let me into heaven. It don't work. You can't tell God, God, I got a billion dollars in the bank account. Bang. Let me into heaven. Are you following what I'm saying? The currency does not exchange at the same rate. You see, when Jesus makes this statement here in, uh, in the book of Mark, he said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Listen, it don't matter if you get everything this world has to offer. If your things had you and they led you away from Christ, you can't take those things and exchange them for uh, for a place or a spot in heaven. Are you following what I'm saying? The currency does not exchange the correct way. It, you, you can't pay for it. It doesn't happen. There is no amount of money you can pay to get into heaven. So watch this. What currency do we need to get into heaven? I'm glad you asked. You see, in Mark chapter 8, verse number 37 and 38, Jesus is making another statement. And Jesus, whenever Jesus is talking... It's deep. He's not just saying one thing. There's layers to it. 
You see, you already let us know in verse 36, it doesn't gain, it doesn't profit you anything to gain everything in this world and lose your soul. It doesn't profit you anything to put your stuff first and then you miss heaven. Look what he says. Verse number 38. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in what? This adulterous generation. Of him shall the son of man be ashamed when he come into the glory of his father and his holy angels. Oh, wow. Did you catch it? Jesus now not only makes it clear. He says, look. If you decide to take your stuff, this is my commentary. This is my sermon. This is my takeaway from verses 37 and 38 of Matt of Mark chapter eight. He says, if you decide to take your stuff and put a priority and moreover, allow your stuff to make you not be able to share the gospel, allow your position of fame, your po political position, your 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 elevated position, if you allow your position to make you ashamed to uplift me. Then guess what? When you get to heaven, I'm going to be ashamed of you. Oh, man. Did you catch what happened? If you are ashamed to share the love of God, he says right here very clearly, when you get to heaven, I'm going to be ashamed of you. Here's the very last thing I want you to type before we go into our altar call. Type this. I am not ashamed of God. I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. This is the power that makes my life what it is. So if you see Michael Lyons and I'm rich, I will uplift the name of God. If you see Michael Lyons and I become a politician for whatever reason, which I hope not, not in this climate, I'm still going to tell you that Jesus saves. If you see Michael Lyons and I become, you know, uh, world renowned for whatever reason, I will still uplift the name of God. But don't, it don't just stop with Michael. How about you? When I see Jenna Loco, are you going to uplift the name of God, whatever position you're in? When I see J.D. Divine, will you uplift the name of God? When I see J. Humble, will you uplift the name of God? When I see Loretta, will you uplift the name of God? Ryan, will you uplift the name of God? Hey, Joshua, will you uplift the name of God? Dominic, when I see you as the president or the vice president, will you uplift the name of God? No matter what position I'm in, no matter if I'm low, no matter if I'm high, no matter if I'm driving a Bentley, no matter if I'm driving a Rolls Royce, no matter if I have a bug with a dent in the back, no matter if I got a Pinto that only runs two days a week, I will always, always uplift the name of God. So let me backtrack and let me tell you where we went and then we're going to close. Here we go. We went to Mark chapter 8, verses 34, 35. 36, 37, and 38. Here is the thesis. Here is the crux. Here is the point of what I'm trying to get across to you. Put God first. Always. Put God first. So what are you going to do? You see, maybe you're here today and you're like, hey, I didn't even know why I spent this time listening to this dude who I don't even know. Or maybe you're like, hey, hey, pastor, listen, this was for me. No matter where you are on the scope, if you're here today, two things I want you to do. Number one is I want you to stop any distractions you got right now for the next three minutes, because this is going to be an important decision for you to make. Number two. I just want you to pray with me. You see, if you're somebody here today who recognizes that your life is not right with God, you recognize today that you've put stuff before God 
You put your boyfriend before God. You put your boy, husband before God. You put your wife. You put your girlfriend before God. You put your job before God. You put your money before God. You put your stuff before God. If that's you, I want you to pray today. I want you to ask God for forgiveness for putting things before him. Second person I want to talk to. I want to talk to that person who's mentioned right at the beginning of this passage. The people. You see, God called people and the disciples. Maybe you someone who don't even have a relationship with God. I don't even know why I listened to this pastor in a beanie sitting down in front of the mountains. But I did. And because I did, I know I need to start a relationship with God. You see, if you're here, I want you to pray after me and I want you to give your life to God today. If that's you, pray with me. Here we go. Say this. Say, dear Lord. I admit today that I'm a sinner. I haven't been doing right at all. I've put my stuff before you. And it has not filled my life. I've smoked everything I can smoke. I've drunk everything I can drink. I've, I've, I've felt every high or, or, or thing that a grown person can feel. Yet I'm not satisfied. Lord, today, I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. This is what I want you to say. Say, dear Lord, today I admit I'm a sinner. But I want you to come into my life right now. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again from the grave for my sins. Today, I renounce all of my sins, and I'm giving all of my life to you. Lead me now, Lord, from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that simple prayer today, and you prayed it in honesty, Nothing magical that was in my words. It's all about what you believe and your earnesty in your heart. If you prayed that simple prayer in accordance to Romans 10, verse number nine, if you believe, if you confess your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ lived, died and rose again from the grave for your sins, then you are saved today. So if that's you, I want to be the first one to welcome you to the family. Listen. If you got saved today or you recommitted your life today, if that's you, I want to say thank you for taking the time to make your life better. So listen, hey, we have some members here of our church who would just love to, uh, to, to, to share this with you here. So if you got saved and you feel comfortable enough doing so, just type I got saved today in the comment section. If you recommitted your life, just type recommitted. And if you see that Christian brother or sister uh, out there, you see somebody type saved or recommit, then would you take the time to congratulate them? Because I can't see all the names that come through here, but you can see them. So if you got saved or you recommitted your life today, just type saved or type recommitted. And uh, and we just want to take the time to congratulate you like JC 2020. Congratulations. Nice job on recommitting yourself today. I seen that one right there. Uh uh, gaming MC type recommitted. Congratulations, gaming. Hey, I see you out there, man. Nice job today. Uh, Nathan says, I got recommitted today. Congratulations. Everybody give it up for Nathan out there. Listen, these are people who are making a conscious decision to keep God first. Hey, um, thank you very much. I see you guys out there again. You congratulate them. I don't I don't know. I can't see all the people out there, but you can see them because they're going by so fast. Uh, last couple things here before we get out of here today. Uh, make sure you take some time, like this, share this. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the page. Uh, this is a, an e church. For those of you here uh, who enjoyed it today, wherever you're at, if you gave your life to Christ, recommitted, or you just happen to be here, make sure you get into a good Bible believing church. I am a Bible teaching, Bible believing pastor. That's what I do. I preach out of the Bible, I go straight through it. So at the least bit, you can be connected to God's word. So if that's you, uh, you want to be a part of a good Bible believing church. If you want to be a part of this church, all you have to do is go over to uh, the website, BibleTalk2.com. 
Again, go to BibleTalk2.com. Go over there and you can uh, uh, just uh, click. You want to join this church, this e-church. Uh, it's real easy. All you do, just go on the website, BibleTalk2.com. Click and boom, you're a part of the church. Simple as that. All you got to do is just go to BibleTalk2.com and click on the website. I want to join. Got that? Other than that, if you don't want to go here, just go somewhere that teaches the Bible. Got that? That's it, guys. Thank you all so much. You have now been in church, and now it's time to go. All right, you have a great rest of the day. All right, blessings to you all, and I will see you all the next time we are able to meet again. All right? All right, Jay Humble, have a good day. All right, Korazi, have a good day. All right? Uh, Have a good day, Ryan. Uh, have a good day, Mr. Sion. Jonas, great to see you today. Have a good day, man. Mike, have a good day. All right, have a good day, guys. Have a, Let's see who else is out there. Sully, Sully, Dominic, man, great to have you here again, man. Have a good day, all right? John, have a good day. Jonas, Nigel, take care, man. Take care, my brother. JC, take care. Uh, 2020, take care. Great to see you again. Uh, Loetta, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Real Jello. Have a good day. All right, guys. Take care, man. All right. Bye bye.